In this demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at our audit and capital management platform built within model driven apps. My name is Steve Glasspool. I'm the head of consultancy here at Valto. Uh, in a previous role, I was a trained quality ISO 9001 auditor uh, that allowed me to perform internal audits within the UK, but also travel to France and Japan to perform some supplier audits. Within this platform, we have a number of different admin lists, which are going to support our audits and corrective actions that we put together. The first of which is our ISO standards list. And within here, we can see all the various different ISO standards that we're going to be auditing against. For example, we have ISO 9001 quality. If I jump into this standard, where we see information about the standard itself and who owns that standard within the business. And then we can see all the various different clauses which make up that standard. When performing audits, we might audit against the full standard, or we may just be auditing against one particular area of the standard, for example, document management. We also have a number of areas that we can set up. Areas are based on various different locations, departments or functions within your organization. So for example, we may have a location such as a particular office that we're going to be auditing, uh, really handy for a health and safety audit, for example. We may have a particular department, so we might just be auditing finance or IT. We may have a particular function. So rather than just auditing finance, we might specifically just be auditing payroll. Um, and in that scenario, that might be a mixed function, which is between HR and finance. Or we might just be auditing one particular process. So in this scenario, project delivery. By having our standards clauses and areas set up, it allows us to go and generate an audit. If we click into the active audits area, we're able to see all the various different audits that we have within the system. We've already created one, so I'm going to jump into our headquarters surveillance audit. And in this scenario, we've got an audit set up, which is going to be a health and safety audit of our headquarters. We can see the audit name and the owner, so who's responsible for this audit. We can see the date it's going to take place and any notes related to it. We then have a number of different subgrids, and this is where we can pull in information from the various lists that we just looked through. In this scenario, we've got our areas that are being audited. So we can see that we've got all the various areas of the headquarters, so south wing, ground floor, warehouse, etc. And these are going to be contained within the ISO 18001 audit. We can also see our various different clauses that are being audited against. So once again, we can see this is ISO 18001, which is health and safety. And we could be auditing against the full clause, or it may well just be one or many of these items that we're auditing against. We can also add one or many participants to the audit. If we click on new participant, we've got the ability to use a quick create form to enter various different participants. These users will be users that are part of your organization. So it may well be that you've got a quality manager, a health and safety manager, et cetera, that you're speaking to. So you can keep a log of everyone that was included within the audit. As we move down the page, we can now log our non-conformities and improvements. So these items that may come out of the audit. Once again, if we click new improvement, we'll have a quick create form. And this is where we can go and log those items into place. We've already got one set up here. So again, as it's a health and safety audit, we've got a particular action. In this case, a fire exit was obstructed. So this is a non-conformance that needs to be fixed. So we've logged that item and we've logged the owner of that item. So this is the person that's responsible for that. We've populated the improvement description. So what we found and what needs to be changed. And we've logged the improvement type. We may have a minor non-conformance or a major non-conformance. This might dictate the timescales in which you need that to be fixed. And we can also log an opportunity for improvement. What we mean by an opportunity for improvement is something which isn't necessarily a non-conformance and isn't going to affect your uh, certification status with ISO, but it is something that auditors like to see that you're logging for continual improvement moving forward. We can define our due date, and then we can put our information about what was located. The way we capture information here is using a system known as PERI, which is point, evidence, requirement, and impact. Essentially, the point is what needs to happen. So in this scenario, we need to make sure we're not obstructing uh, any entry ways or fire exits. We need some evidence. Um, so that might be a photo or an idea of what's happened. So in this scenario, desks were stacked in front of a fire exit. We can take the requirement 
and that requirement comes out of the ISO clause. So we can say in ISO 18001, a particular clause defines that all routes in and out of the building must be clear of obstructions. And we can take a look at the impact. Um, so if we don't do anything, what's the cost to the business? Uh, what's the issue with this scenario? You know, it could be um, risk of injury within the business. Within this page, we can see that we've got a business process flow at the top here. This business process flow allows us to move through various different stages. So we've got an item which is created as new, and we can see all the various different fields that must be completed before I can move on to correcting the issue. As an example here, if I was actually to delete our title, you'll be able to see that I've got some validation rules into place there. So I need to have that improvement name into place. If we're at the correction stage, for example, we can go and input our corrective action statement. And once again, we'd need that to be filled in before we could move to prevention. So we can say, fix a thing, and we can move it on to prevention. So that's gonna set it to the next stage. In this business process flow, we can have various different triggers set into place. So we have notifications that are sent when we move something from new to correction and correction to prevention. We also can have various different tasks that are set up. So for example, someone may be responsible for the correction, someone different may be responsible for the prevention. And then when we move it to verification, it would come back to the auditor and the auditor would need to do a check to make sure what changes have happened have actually fixed the issue in the long run. So that might be a month later, three months later, for example. We can see a resolutions tab in place here. So a lot of the fields in the business process flow are also reflected within the screen. So we can see our corrective action statement. So that may well be move the desks from in front of the fire exit. We've got our preventive action statement, and that may well be that we need to put better signage up on the door that says do not block fire exits. We might need to update the policy and we might need to run some training. And then we've got our verifications in place, which will be the auditor going back in and saying, I can see signs on the door. I can see that no fire exits are obstructed. I've checked the training records and I can see everyone's had fire safety training in place. Yes, we can close this action down. Everything's all been correct. We also have a timeline into place. So we can, if we wish to, enter various different notes into place here and we can pop some updates with some information in and we can add a note so we can essentially get a storyline, which is really great if we've got an auditor sitting in front of this system and the fix hasn't been fully completed. We can show all the various different updates that have happened to actually show the auditor that we're moving towards a correction versus an auditor thinking that actually you've logged it, but you've not done anything about it. So that gives a quick whistle stop tour of our audit system. Um, if you want to know more, then please do reach out to us. Uh, we can set up some demonstrations of the system with yourselves, and we can also talk through your needs and any kind of bespoke requirements that you may have uh, to align the auditing system with your current processes.